presentation. But once again, good evening to everyone and a very good morning to Dr. Susan. So I'm very much honored and humbled to be at this uh, AIOS IOC 2022 platform. And I thank Dr. Boramani sir, and Dr. Amalia Sahu sir and Dr. Boramani sir for giving me this opportunity. Today, I shall be speaking on Dr. Sahu's technique of two millimeter SICS and I do not hold any financial interest in this presentation. Uh, my acknowledgements to Dr. Amalia Sahu sir for teaching me this technique and mentoring me throughout the process. And also Dr. Harsha Bhattacharji sir for being my mentor and introducing me to ISMS AICS. So uh, we all know that cataract is the leading cause of avoidable blindness worldwide, and it has been extensively covered by my previous speakers. And uh, to uh, in order to address this backlog, MSICS, that is manual SICS, has been performed for high volume cataract surgery settings. But it has not limited itself to only these high volume surgeries. There has been significant modifications in the technical advances as well, uh, uh, as well for the sutureless MSICS technique. So today. Uh, next slide. So today uh, we will be describing Dr. Sahu's two millimeter micro incision technique, wherein the instruments have also been modified in order to uh, correspond to the uh, small, inc uh, small incision size, that is the two millimeter. Herein, I would like to uh, bring to your observation one instrument that is the sturdy uh, vectis. It is a solid, sturdy, but a sleek vectis, which helps to uh, 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 that is manipulate the nucleus as well as it uh, supports the nucleus during the bisection of the nucleus during uh, with the visco cannula. So we are also using certain other instruments here along with that, that is the marker, the modified uh, Sinsky hook and as well as the uh, multi-jet and the single jet cannulas for washing off the endothelium from the remnants of the cortical matter. So, uh, in the next slide, we will uh, discuss the technique. So as you can see, after creation of the scleral pocket, we have entered the AC with the keratome. And, uh, but I have not made any initial uh, back cuts in this uh, video. So you see after prolapsing the nucleus, it has been held steady with the left hand with the vectis and then as we continuously uh, put in the visco and bring in the uh, fragmented nucleus, you can observe that there was a purse string effect. This purse string effect was that because I did not give the back cut in this uh, surgery initially. I thought that it was to be given when I'm supposed to implant the PMMA IOL. So having learned my mistake, uh, the next slide I would like to show you that the learning curve was really steep for me because with this uh, technique, I had uh, certain uh, complications. That is, I had difficulty in manipulation of the nucleus. I had an iris uh, prolapse in the superior part. There was corneal edema mostly in uh, uh, some of my cases. And in one of the cases, I had a PC rent. And since I was uh, going ahead from a larger incision towards a smaller incision, I had also a cut on the roof of the uh, tunnel in my initial case. So now I would like to show you what was to be actually done in the uh, two millimeter incision. So having placed a two millimeter incision, 1.5 millimeter behind the limbus, we move on to the scleral pockets, uh, corneal pockets, 1.5 millimeter head. And this is the initial back cut that should have been given before entering into the AC. The scleral pockets are now created on both sides up to the end of the 1.5 millimeter extensions. So this, uh, what happens here is that we get a compressible floor for my easy manipulation. And you can see now the nucleus actually glides up. It does not cause a per string effect. So in this technique, uh, there is a hypotenuse of around five millimeter that is created by the two millimeter incision and the 1.5 millimeter back cut, which helps us to implant even a PMMA IOL through this two millimeter incision. So these back cuts has actually limited my incision to two millimeter only in the scleral uh, tunnel. So in the next slide, I will uh, show you that even uh, in the harder nucleus, you can go ahead with the fracture of the nucleus in the bag. But in case of soft cataract, you see, we have used the, this is Dr. Uh, Amelia Sahu sir's uh, video. You can see how easily the, even the soft nucleus has been fragmented in the bag. 
but uh, the flat instrument that is the iris repositor is being used not the sinski to deliver the nucleus or prolapse the nucleus into ac because this prevents a further injury to the uh, endothelium as well as the iris behind here instead of trying with the vectis with the sturdy vectis we have actually uh, delivered the fragments that is the hemi nucleus with the visco delivery technique so we have just put in the visco and expressed the nucleus out of the bag out of the i mean the anterior chamber so phaco fragment uh, fragmentation in the bag is also possible with this 2 mm technique with the soft as well as the hard cataract so um moving on to the next case so these are my initial 35 cases after having learned from dr sahu sir we have a good visual equity in the post operative day one itself, wherein uh, around 23 of my patients had 6-9 vision on the first day. However, the visual equity dropped to 618 was because of the corneal edema and the DM pulse that I encountered during the uh, process of delivering the nucleus. And as Dr. RT has already addressed the astigmatic factor in this uh, SICS technique, we can see that in the 2 millimeter technique, uh, 0 0.75 cylindrical correction can be achieved uh, to a plano on the uh, post-operative. This is um, on six weeks of um, surgery post-operatively. So these are my facts. And we all know that to learn from a larger incision, that is to transition ourselves from a larger incision to a smaller incision, we really need to keep our minds open and have a clear vision of what we are actually going to uh, modify in the technique, be disciplined and persevere in our process. So in all this uh, uh, skill transfer, it is important that we maintain the skill of the surgeon itself because it is crucial not only for the outcome of the surgery, but also in delivering the skill transfer to the young ophthalmologist. So in the next one, next video, okay. So as we are augmenting our uh, student training programs for uh, uh, skill, uh, that is the basic SICS training program for students, and moving on to advanced techniques, we are seeing that we have moved on to even technical uh, uh, this one uh, progress. So this is the ingenuity system where I am showing that it is possible with a good set of skills to perform this technique even on the ingenuity system. So to recapitulate again, here is the two millimeter incision that we have made a good uh, 1.5 millimeter extension behind the edges of the wound for a, a pliable floor of the wound, a triplanar incision into the AC, creation of a good hydrodissection fluid wave, prolapse of the nucleus into the AC, and finally bisection with a continuous viscoelastic substance and gliding out the nucleus with the vectis. So Dr. Sahu's two millimeter incision features the refinement of the incision by limiting the size to two millimeter only, as well as the site of the incision that is addressing the steep keratometric axis to achieve astigmatic neutrality. The visco fragmentation is very important for a safer corneal endothelium and foldable IOL is easily implanted in this, te uh, in this technique. However, if you want to implant a rigid PMMA IOL, the uh, optical size of 5.5 millimeter can be done because of the wound architecture that we have created by giving a back cut and creation of the scleral pockets. Definitely it is cost effective than FECO and produces less carbon footprint, but most importantly, it is a reproducible surgery. So in my next slide, I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to tell you that the surgical outcome for the patients, both in terms of uh, technicality, as well as the qu functional quality of life in terms of vision is comparable to uh, FECO in two millimeter SICS. And with that, I would like to uh, thank you for this opportunity. And by uh, that, I conclude by quoting Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who says that creativity is seeing the same thing, but it is actually thinking differently. So the next slide shows my references. And thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity. Dr. Namrata ma'am, uh, the AIOS uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Sahus of ISMSAS.